I love watching you do this. You get so focused. You, get, you don't even know it, but you're like holding your mouth open. I was like, <laughs> I was wondering if you were recording your mouth. No, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> Dude, you know how particular Jamie is, dude. If it's wrong, I'll be yelled at. Welcome back to our series on building a small income property. Today, we're going to get started by continuing the roof framing that we started with the gable ends and flat ceilings. Gable ends, to get going, we're just attaching a top plate to the bottom of our rafters, and our studs will just run up and terminate into that. Then we're going to add a sheetrock nailer, another 2x4 on top of that, because this is a vaulted ceiling. We'll need somewhere for that ceiling surface to attach to right there. And then we're just going to plumb up from our marks, measure each one. And we could just do math on it, but with this many, there's only like seven or eight. I think it's actually faster to just plumb up, make a mark and take a measurement is what I think. Brett's here and we're just discussing this area is gonna be walled off. This area is vaulted closer to me. And we're like, should we leave a ledge or just a wall and put like a a door for access. No ledge. Ledge is 80s, man. Ledge is 80s? No <laughs> you could put a bunch of stuff in there, though. We're onto this gable and wall that's separating the vaulted area from the non vaulted area. You can see we had to do this ladder style blocking so that we would have somewhere to nail this top plate on. Otherwise, it's just between the rafters. There's nothing to nail it to. I think that's a good technique and it doesn't really uh, hamper your insulation or anything like that. Jono was just pointing out that these pass load cordless nailers have a really nice sharp side claw on the tip there that you depress for safety. And for toenailing, it really sticks nice and gives you an easy toenail uh, versus some of the other guns don't have as sharp of a side claw and it's a little harder to toenail. And I think that's a good point to uh, kind of point out. And they don't offer as many yeah. of the Yes. You know, that has prongs on a 360. So yeah, awesome. you're right. So there's there's a lot of little differences between some of these tools that can make a big difference for us. Here's another way to plumb up these gable end studs that I'm doing right now. If you have a member installed that you know is plumb okay. like that, you can just hook on it on the bottom over to your layout here, uh, 2358. Then hook up and run horizontal. Put a mark on the top plate, 23 and 5 eighths like I've done there. And this member should also be plumb, yeah, hopefully. Plumb. You want to go and wall in this gable too right now? Yeah, I just cut off those tails so we can do that, but this is kind of in the way here. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and connect the ridge to this other roof line so that we can get rid of that and it can't move this way at all. Yeah, and we are braced down here too. I, we could probably get rid of it now. All right. I think so. We're installing our ceiling joist on the non-vaulted part of the back of the house here. It's easier to finish a non-vaulted ceiling. It takes less time and money. It so does. For this part, even though it would be amazing to have vaulted ceilings in the laundry room with vaulted big closets, beam <laughs> collar ties running through the laundry and the small little bath here, we're actually going flat for uh, efficiency's sake, actually. And these were supposed to be collar ties for something else, but I changed my mind and they just happen to be on the job. They're about the right size. They're actually oversized and over strength for being a ceiling joist. Just like Jason. Yeah. <laughs> but they are here and they're the right length for this. So here we go. All right, here we go. Drop it in. This rigamaroo, it's there's another one. Uh, drop her down. Drop her down. Yep. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's perfect. This video is brought to you by North One and they make one of the hardest parts about running a small business easy. What, what's the hardest part? Keeping the money straight. Hmm. They offer a full business banking experience at your fingertips inspired by small business owners for small business owners. It only takes about three minutes to download the North One app and create an account. And you can do that by clicking the link down in the description and then you'll get a secure business debit card to go with your account.
Once you're set up, you have all your banking needs right from your phone or your computer, and you may never have to set foot in a bank again. Do not go in there. North One also has the ability to seamlessly consolidate the most popular integrations like Stripe, PayPal, and Shopify, and I can easily and automatically keep up with all my funds housed in one business account. We can also link to our QuickBooks account so we can quickly generate funding reports. What is that? My favorite feature they offer is the Profits First system using envelopes. It organizes our money for upcoming expenses like taxes and payroll or rent, and they set aside a portion of incoming funds automatically, as well as setting aside owner's pay and profit. And for builders, there's one expense that can really stack up if you're not watching out for it. What is it? Workman's comp. Every time, you gotta have the money. With North One, there are no hidden fees and you'll get free ACH transfers as well as the ability to send checks. There's no overdraft fees and you get free deposits at over 80,000 locations for a flat rate of only $10 a month. I really encourage you to download North One and start managing your business's finances with ease. New North One users that use the link in my description and open and fund an account will get a $10 credit on their first month. Impact. I'll go get my drill, I didn't really Hey, we got our ceiling joists up here, but there's still places where you couldn't nail drywall up like on either side of this wall. You got nothing to nail to, so we're gonna add uh, deadwood, they call it, on either side and let it stick off like two inches each side. We're gonna add some deadwood here so that the drywall's got something to nail to there. We're just gonna look at everything and make sure that when you go to nail drywall up, they're not gonna call us back and be like, hey, I can't nail this up. There's nothing <laughs> to nail it to. Yeah, they're not very nice. Yeah, they're not, they're not happy when that happens. Hey, that's some old dead wood. It's dead and it's old. It's reclaimed. <laughs> You finally got your True Work shade shirt out. Yeah, man, I've been seeing you wearing yours and you've been happy, so I have. Been... I'm not sunburned at all yet, yeah. except I don't have it with me today. <laughs> so if you take that off. I don't think you're gonna need it today. <laughs> Jamie, what are you gonna do where that sticks up higher than the other ridge line? Well, I'm gonna extend uh, a line out like this and cut this off. Okay. And then there'll be like, the valley comes in right about here, uh -huh. and then there'll be a weird little hip thing. It goes here and here. Okay. Believe me, it took that took me the longest to draw that in SketchUp of anything on this whole house. I believe you. Was to figure out how to draw that in the uh, in the program there. You still got dirt coming tomorrow and gravel? Back I field? hope so. It's one of those things where you made a plan to do it, but then the person that's going to do it won't answer their phone for several mm, days. One of those, huh? And you keep calling. You just assume. Right, that's gonna be as planned. That's all you can do. So we need to do some waterproofing after we, a sub sandwich? Yeah, we need to put the bichetane up on the walls and then uh, be ready to install the French drain as soon as the gravel gets in because it's gotta get inspected. And guess what? Oh, I invited oh. the inspector to be there, but guess what? I don't know if, you know, you know, there's things building on things that may or may not be happening. Jason and I have like a five or seven day streak of splitting an old fashioned club, half and half at Ingles, lunch. <laughs> Oh, gets a lot of crap on here. Arlo gets everything. I get everything but the pickles. Turkey. Jonu is bringing a little style to the job site. And so am I. Nice. Well, I don't know what style it is. It's uh, some, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's some kind of style. That's what he looks I like. Feel it, I feel That's excited. That's what he looks like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. As Jamie was mentioning at lunch, we're gonna fill this in with some gravel and dirt tomorrow. So we gotta get this thing waterproofed. We've been charged with the task. Who? Us, you and me. We, <laughs> oh, just you and they're, I. There's, they're gonna do this other gable end, so. Okay, that's cool, we're good at it. Um, let's just start on one end and work till we're done. Perfect. It's not bad, it's not even as tall as our normal foundation. I'm trying to make it sound like it's not bad still. <laughs> Keep going, bud. Keep trying. Oh, it's not that bad. It's not even big as our... If you're not familiar, this is the stuff we're using. It's a self-adhering membrane called bituthane or bituthane. This is a word that I don't know how to say, and everybody says it different. I call it bituthane. Bituthane. I don't know. It sounds like a cuss word, but it works great because we can do it ourselves, and we can do it quickly, and then this wall can't absorb moisture. I've heard people call it, like, Bitch a thing. <laughs> you definitely can't say. Uh, yeah, 
That's what they call it. I'm like, I know what you're, I know what you're saying because I've seen it. So we're going to start by chalking a line across this wall just above grade. The grade's going to slope right here so that we don't waste a bunch by running it up too high uh, or we don't, you know, not run it high enough above grade. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good, man. No wrinkles, no big gadges in it, gadges, gouges. Yeah, once this stuff sticks to itself one time, if you're sort of pulling the backing off and then it gets stuck, you just as well cut it and throw it away. You're done. It's done, yeah, it is so sticky. <laughs> and um, especially when it's hot, it really sticks well. If it's cold, we do use a primer uh, to stick it better. Looks like y'all got a good start at it. Yeah. You know, I, I thought maybe you would ask me about grade because you guys have to decide like where grade is, right? Oh, we decided. Well, that's what I figured since I didn't hear from you, I figured you just- We decided to just go up just look, and we'll get a little lower and lower as we go that way because the grade of the road's dropping. A little bit. Yeah, sounds like you're on top of it. Yeah, we got it. We got it's, it figured uh, out, I think. Sticking pretty good for you? It's sticking real good. All right, hey, I was gonna say one thing if you don't mind. Uh, maybe take a shovel, the back of a flat shovel, and just kind of scrape off any of those sharp nubbins there on the wall for me. Yeah, we can do that. Looking good. We'll do it. We've reached a really tricky spot here. We've got to get it creased into the corner and the backing comes off all at once. So it's really likely we're gonna get the stuff stuck to itself. So I think what we're gonna to try to do is cut the backing, the paper backing very carefully as to not cut through the waterproofing because that would defeat the purpose of the waterproofing and just stick that side and then stick that side. I don't know if that's gonna work. It's working. Wow, look at that. Wow, that's pretty impressive though. <laughs> My honest opinion on this stuff is that it works great if you have fairly dry soil. It keeps the moisture from absorbing into the block. But if this were like in a spring head or something where there's like liquid water behind here, this is not gonna keep the water out. There's no chance. Water, water can get in anywhere. It is amazing what water under pressure, static pressure even, can do. So this in combination with the drain tile that we're gonna put in, it's a French drain, is gonna work great for here. But definitely if you got like a really wet situation going on, I would get this thing like spray rubberized or something else, or just not build it in somewhere that's super wet. That's kind of just a bad idea to start with in my opinion. Finally got confirmation here that the gravel will be coming, not tomorrow, but maybe today. Oh, that's even better. It's even sooner. Now it is a big mess out here. We gotta do a little bit of material management because we got one little flat landing up top where the gravel can go and it's full of materials right now. We Currently. need to move basically everything. And then I need to consolidate the things that can get returned to Jennings because I've got a truck coming this afternoon to do a pickup for everything leftover foundation wise that we're not going to use. We didn't use it, not going to use it. It needs to leave here now. Right. And then I need to get the trash trailer because we got bags full of trash and piles of trash that are in the way of getting all the dirt in. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work so we can against do the house. But you guys are trucking along on the waterproofing uh, membrane. That's great. I'm going to start material management. That's good. Uh, but then also I was hoping to get this front deck post work done so that the front pier holes can just get backfilled in around the posts. Uh, but I don't know if we're going to make it that far. We need we more may... hours in the day. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think moving that would be the number one thing because if the gravel pile's there, we can drive the excavator there, yeah. scoop it, drive on the road behind the house, 
dump all over Anywhere, the drain tile everywhere yes without having a wheelbarrow no wheelbarrowing yeah. please if possible <laughs> Very, as little as possible i'll never forget the first time we tried to put this stuff on and we tried to do it horizontally and it it would just droop and just stick to itself we probably threw away like an entire roll horizontally work. yeah we didn't know we're just like you know lap it like shingles idea <laughs> instead of cutting shorter strips and doing vertical yeah it was such a disaster. I was like, I will never use this again. And then somebody's like, uh, did you try putting it on vertical? I was like, yeah, of course we did. What's up, big man? We're just checking on the progress, ain't we? Well, he's been keeping us straight here. You knuckles? Yeah. <laughs> You're fast, man. Right. Jamie's like, he's not coming today. And then I turn around, well, there he is. Yeah. You want to grab the pipe and lay it in there in case some of the gravel goes in? We don't, in have, case? To, hey, we don't have to muck it out later. <laughs> what? I said, y'all done good for a bunch of amateurs. I'll take that as a compliment. You take that. <laughs> <laughs> Not a single rock went in there. Well, I take it back, like five rocks. Pretty good dump. We need a good dump. Wow. <laughs> How much is a load of gravel? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Right? <laughs> Perfect. I don't need to know. Yeah. Thinner stuff I've seen like that, Jamie. I know. I I normally get the same stuff. It's black. It's really thick. Super yeah. tough. I mean, you can barely cut it with a knife. But this, I ordered this, it this time. That's what it's for. That's what it said on the package. Maybe it's tougher than it looks. I don't think it is. Got to keep dirt from going through. Yeah. I think it'll do it. It really didn't take near as much gravel as I expected to do the French drain. So we got a lot left. We either got to try to save it by keeping it over there and hope it doesn't get all mashed into the mud and spread around when we get dirt in here, or we could just use it to backfill that bottom, you know, three feet right there. What do you think would be better? It's expensive backfill if you don't need it, but yeah, if you don't need it up here, then- You're better off pulling it out and putting it in a pile over there and just saving it, you think? Maybe, maybe we'll try to save it. What we need though is that little compactor thing you got. If we're gonna start putting dirt in this, I think lower, it's at your garage. What is it? My house? I yeah. don't think so. I don't think, think it, I have it. I think it is. Eric, no, right the compactor. Here. Yeah, the little plate compactor. Yeah, the wacky packer. I don't think I have it. I haven't seen it. It's looking good, but I can't help but notice that maybe I'm not getting my equal time on that machine as Eric. What do you think? Dude, he took you off that like you were a little stepchild. He was I mean, like, son. 
Let me out the machine, little boy. He just took you right out there. I thing. think I did like five scoops, and then he did the whole rest of the job. Yeah. You're going two layers. Yeah, everybody knows two layers on the bottom is better. I mean, look at the Titanic. <laughs> Double layer bottom. Everybody. Arlo was saying, what if the inspector gets out here and be like, no, you can't do two layers. That's going to do that hydraulic siphoning, whatever. You know? <laughs> hydraulic siphoning. <laughs> I th no, I think it's good. I think it's a good call. <laughs> All right, come on, Eric. Double layers. I still got enough to do another layer. Yeah. Triple. And wrap. Christmas Jamie, you want, you want to jump on here? No, no, no. Hurry up. Let's go. We gotta go. I couldn't.